Hey y'all, in this video, we're gonna focus in on understanding how the energy harnessed through a proton gradient can be used to synthesize ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Just like all the other processes in oxidative phosphorylation, this happens in the matrix of the mitochondria and across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Okay, it's catalyzed by a big enzyme complex known as the F1, F0 ATPase. Okay, so this protein is kind of built of two different components. The first one is the F0 component, which is this ring system that's built into the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Okay, and it's this part of the protein that's responsible for moving protons across the inner membrane of the mitochondria and converting that chemical energy into an energy that can be used to make ATP. Okay, the other part of this enzyme is the part that's actually present in the matrix of the mitochondria, and this is known as the F1 part of the, of, of the ATPase. All right, so let's first focus on how protons are moved across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. As I mentioned, this is facilitated by the F0 part of this protein. Okay, and without going into too much detail, each of these little cylinders I'm showing here is meant to represent a single alpha helix. Okay, so this ring called the C ring um, is built of a large number of these individual alpha helices. Okay, and the idea here is that this ring will rotate and it rotates based on the transport of protons across the membrane. Okay, so remember, the, this gradient is set up so that outside of the inner membrane, in the inner membrane space, there's a high concentration of protons, and in the matrix, there's a low concentration of protons. And this gradient is built up through the, uh, um, the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. Okay, so as protons get pumped through this C ring, then the ring itself rotates. And it's the rotation of that ring that plays that, that ultimately allows that energy to be harnessed and translated into chemical energy that can make ATP. Okay, so what happens is as this ring rotates, due to protein, uh, due to protons being transported across the membrane, it will rotate this blue subunit, which is called the gamma subunit of the ATPase. And it's the rotation of this gamma subunit in response to the rotation of the C ring that ultimately drives ATP synthesis. Okay, so the important piece to take home about this C ring is that it rotates in response to protons being pumped across the membrane. Okay, so we now know that it's the rotation of this ring that ultimately rotates the gamma subunit, this blue subunit, which will then uh, translate that energy into chemical energy to make ATP. So let's look at the rest of the protein to understand how that happens. So this is known as the F1 part of the protein. And if we take a closer look at it, what we'll notice is that rotated to look up through the gamma subunit, we see six fairly equivalent subunits um, that as the colors indicate here, they have an alternating pattern. Okay, and we're gonna explain how this protein works using this model that shows this alternating pattern, okay? So as we're showing in this model, the alternating pattern goes alpha, which is orange, beta, which is purple, then alpha, beta, alpha, beta, okay? And this is a symmetric pattern, alternating alpha, beta. And as it turns out, the beta subunits are the important ones. And even though the image suggests that the beta subunits are equivalent, the truth is, is that they're not because that central unit, the gamma subunit, the blue part here, it actually interacts with these three beta subunits differently. And depending upon how it's interacting with the beta subunits will, um, will cause the beta subunits to adopt three different conformations. They will, it will either adopt an open conformation shown as O here, a loose conformation shown as L, and the tight conformation shown as T. 
And the different confirmations are really important. The open confirmation, the idea here is that you can have free exchange between um, ADP, inorganic phosphate, and ATP with the matrix of the mitochondria. So we can have free diffusion in and out of the active site. The loose conformation, we have ADP and inorganic phosphate bound um, loosely such that they actually can't undergo uh, um, enzymatic conversion, but they're not free to diffuse out of the active site. And the T, the tight conformation, ADP and inorganic ph phosphate are still locked in there, but now it's in a conformation where they can undergo interconversion and actually make ATP. So the ADP and ATP are in equilibrium. And ultimately, it's the rotation of the beta subunit, which remember is driven by proton pumping across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. It's the rotation of that central gamma subunit that causes the conformations of the three independent beta subunits to change. So notice in the animation I'm showing here, pointing right, we have the tight conformation. Once the gamma subunit rotates, it now is pointing towards the one in the top left corner. So that one becomes the tight conformation and the beta subunit pointing right becomes the open conformation. Since the beta subunit on the right is now open, the product ATP is free to diffuse out. In the top left corner, that beta subunit is now in the tight conformation, so the ADP can now be converted to ATP. And in the bottom left corner, we're now, we, we, we switch from the open conformation to the loose conformation, so that subunit now has our two reactants locked into place, but they cannot react. Another rotation of the central gamma subunit causes our beta subunits to change conformation again. In the top left corner, we're now in the open conformation, so that ATP diffuses out. In the bottom left corner, we switch from the L to the T conformation, so we can now convert our ADP into our product. And on the right, we've switched from the O to the L, so our two reactants are locked in. One more rotation of the gamma subunit gets us back to our original conformation, where the T is pointed right, the L is top left, and the O is bottom left. Another rotation gets us back to our intermediate, where the O is to the right, ATP diffused out, the T is to the top left, and the L is to the bottom left. All right, so you can see that the idea here is that the gamma subunit rotates in response to protons being pumped by that C ring we originally talked about. Um, as it rotates, it causes the beta subunits to switch conformations, and it's that switching between different conformations that drives the synthesis of ATP.